Yo, what up, friends? So, today, I've come to talk to you about a really fun farming strategy that I have been doing thanks to you guys. Now, well, before I get into it, <laughs> can, you, can we comment on this thumbnail? Do we like this thumbnail? Do we hate this thumbnail for this video? Because I decided to try something different, and thanks to my buddy Simex, we, we were exploring a few other options, but I, I think it's freaking awesome. So if you like it, let me know down below. If you hate it and you like the old style, let me know down below. But I figure we try a little something different. So now, today we're going to be doing and talking about a really fun strategy and something that I'm sure a lot of you guys have looked at, decided to do, didn't do, didn't know what to do, how to do it, where to do it, or who to do it. And I've been having an absolute blast with it, so I wanted to share that with you. Now, I've been doing a Val Temple map farming. And Val Temple is a very unique, interesting map. As you can see, I have a whole ton of them, and I've just been buying them and farming them and running them. And honestly, at this point in the league, it's a lot of fun. You can make a lot of profit. You can make no profit. You can have really home runs. You can have not. You got nothing. But it's, it's fun. It's a good gamble. And sometimes you hit storm shrouds that are corrupted with uh, corrupted blood, and you just make 60 divines out of nowhere. I mean, you yeah, know, sometimes it's really good. Now, the map itself is unique. As it says, area contains 10 additional guarded valve vessels. These valve vessels are what we're pretty much aiming for in the map, as they are 10 pretty much strong boxes that are enhanced out of their mines. Now, if we're gonna do this as cheap as possible and easy as possible, we're pretty much just gonna buy a bunch of valve temples. We're gonna make sure that we take these map modifier effect nodes. We're gonna take the entire top hat this will make these maps dangerous, so make sure that your character is comfortable doing a lot of random and good map mods. But this will pretty much essentially kick up the amount of Val Temples that we have, or the Val... What are they called? Guarded Val Vessels from 10 to 16. And that's what makes things a lot of fun. Now the real kicker to what we're doing is we're combining it with Twist of Fate. Now, I know you guys are looking at my Atlas tree and you see there's Wandering Path and this is to make sure that our map modifier effects get to 16, but we'll talk about the map and the Atlas tree after we run our map. So we're going to take our Val Temple, we're going to throw it into our, into our map device, we're going to click Fortune Favors the Brave just to kind of see what we get, and then we're going to run the map. Now, you're going to notice right away our Val Temple map has now become Underground Sea, a much more favorable layout, and... <laughs> the map is unidentified corrupted so if we immediately die we'll swap to a new flash setup so you'll notice right away that we can just easily cyclone all around kill all the mobs no problem and you'll notice right away that we have our first Val vessel so we're gonna do this and we're gonna click on the Val vessels and we're just pretty much gonna blow them up now, essentially what we're aiming for is we're aiming for these unique items that are coming out of them that are corrupted. Sometimes you get winners and sometimes you don't. Now, this is reduced cold damage taken and we just kind of move on. Now, the fun of it is it's kind of like playing the lottery. You never know what you're going to get, so you need to be pretty careful as these are. Ooh, ooh, it's actually pretty good. <gasps> ooh, that's. You have to price check everything because you never know what's going to sell, what's not going to sell, who's going to pay top dollar for what. Now, this isn't your typical farming strategy that will be consistently giving you a ton of currency all the time, but it is, it is something that is fun, it is something that is unique, and it's something that's a little bit different. So you'll see that we're going around the map, and we're going to continue clearing it and just kind of take a look at what drops and what we get. Now, these maps, depending on your build and depending on how you do them, can be done relatively quick or they could take a little bit of time. Overall, I have been very much so doing these maps in a couple of minutes. The longest part about the map is dying to a strong box that has Frost Nova and completely and utterly ending your entire existence, but it is what it is. So, we're gonna go over here, we're gonna kill this, we're gonna look at our Mage Blood, not a Mage Blood. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You just never know. Sometimes you have real good winners and sometimes you pretty much miss. Now, the real interesting part with these Val Temple maps that a lot of people don't realize is they're modifiable strong boxes. And we can really juice up and kick up this map and this farm. I was like, what is that? It's just one white socket. Let's see. Do we have any other? Ooh, we have a harvest too. 
I'll probably save the harvest and do the harvest after the video so that I don't waste too much of your time inside of the map. Now, I'm kind of hoping that we hit a real nice winner during this video and this recording because that'd be really, really cool. But I'm sure... Ooh! That's pretty good, too. An additional curse? What? Okay, yeah. See, these, these boxes end up being, like, really, really, really cool. And sometimes you just get, like, really insane stuff. Critical Strength Multi during any flask effect? I don't think that's any good, but we're going to pick it up because that's kind of cool. And you get a lot of Cobalt Jewels, a lot of Iridian Jewels, a lot of things that you can just kind of really mess around with. Now, I'm going to finish this up. I'll do the harvest later, and then I'm going to talk about the Atlas tree and some of the cool things that you can do inside of this map. That's really cool. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> oh, this map is sweet. Oh, I like doing this. All right, let's kill the boss. Oh, she's dead. If you like the build that you're watching in the Castle on Damage or Castle on Crit character, there'll be a video coming out in the next couple of days going over everything as we have like a really cool Cosprey's and a really cool Prism Guardian and all kinds of cool stuff, but that's a video for another day. So you notice we did this map. We got a bunch of really cool stuff. I'll price check everything after the map, see what's worth something, see what's not worth something. I'm sure this is actually probably like worth something because it's got an additional curse on it. I'm sorry, it's absolutely worthless. I like these maps. I'm sorry. That's a divine. It's not bad. It's like 100k. That's fine. Anyways, these maps are awesome. These maps are sweet. Now, the real cool part about what we're doing is while these maps themselves are very difficult, if we want to keep it simple and we want to keep it easy, we can take Twist of Fate. Twist of Fate essentially says your corrupted rare maps and any Atlas missions, map crafting options, scarabs applied to the modifiers are predictive or are pretty much modified unpredictably. Meaning when I put in a Val Temple map, it spits out something completely random. You saw in the map we just did, we put in Val Temple, we got underground sea, and if I were to do it again, we would get another option. Now, what's the real kicker is, I mentioned, is that all those strong boxes that we're aiming for, we normally get 10, but if we take the Atlas nose on top of the Atlas tree, we get 16. We combine this with Wandering Path. These give us 4% increased effect modifiers on our nine unique maps, and it pretty much scales and kicks everything to the moon. Now, I paired this with a couple of very interesting things since we're taking a Wandering Path tree. I can pair them with extra invitation drops so we kill the map boss and we have a whole lot of chance at invitation drops. I compared it or paired it with Harvest so that we have a lot of chance for Harvest. So on the map we just ran, we have some Harvest. I'm going to go back and clear that out. Right now, Yellow Juice is skyrocketing through the moon. I personally use Blue Juice to reroll Essences as that's my big money making strategy, which I have a video on that. I've added in shrines to give me more shrines. I've given up map drops and map duplication nodes. But the real big kicker to what we're doing is since the Val Temple map comes with those strong boxes, those strong boxes are modifiable by things on the Atlas skill tree. So if we take strong box chance to be reopened, we have a chance to reopening those strong boxes. Now, normally these are 2%, these are double. So we have four, eight, 12% chance to reopen those strong boxes. So one in every 10 will be able to reopen, which is pretty good. I'm trying to get quantity of items contained in our maps. Strong boxes have a chance to be diviner. So if we get other strong boxes in the map, hopefully they're diviner. And I'm also pairing it with a 30% chance to be guarded by additional pack of monsters because I just want to kind of pretty much scale my strong boxes to the moon. Now, I don't need the strong box nodes. The only ones that are pretty relevant are the strong box chance to be reopened, but I like strong boxes. I like essences. I like harvest. I'm putting a bunch of things on my map that I personally enjoy farming on a wandering tree path, and I encourage you to do the same. Now, if you want to spend a little bit of currency and scale this up a little bit, you can roll your sextants for enraged strong boxes, roll your strong boxes for quant, so that you have 500% additional quant, and that will also affect these valve vessels or valve. Yes, valve vessels. Now, if you really want to take it to the next level and you're in a duo or a trio or you have magic fine gear, a real cool tip that I was given is that we can grab five of these Val Temple maps. Now, this is going to cost you a little bit more. and I don't recommend doing this all the time, but if you really want to like juice your maps, I could sell five of these to a vendor and it'll give me an uncorrupted version of this map. So we have these corrupted ones and then we sell it and we get an uncorrupted one. Now, this uncorrupted version of the map, 
I can go identify and then I can go horizon orbit into a bunch of different layouts. Now, Coves is really good. I personally really like Coves, but Arsenal has the patient card. So you have options. There are ways to do this. If you're going to Magic Find, odds are you want to re-roll this into, into Arsenal. Me personally, I would just do it on Coves. If I was going to do that strategy, I would not take Twist of Fate as I would like to have control over my maps. And you'll see right away as I take off Twist of Fate and I go put this in and click on my essences. And I open them. You'll notice right away that as soon as I find one of these, the strong boxes are there and they're openable and they come with corrupted loot and they do everything that we want this map to do. Now, the last and final thing outside of getting immediately killed by Frost Nova is that when we go back into the map and we pick up our loot, we can find these Viridian Jewels. Now, Viridian Jewels being corrupted are really cool and pretty important in this strategy. And another way to make a little bit of currency, because if you like gambling and you have mythic orbs, which I don't have, so hold. Okay, <laughs> we're sorry about that. <laughs> we have mythic orbs. What's really cool is Viridian jewels offer us a very interesting option and chance at gambling. So if you have a little bit of a gambler's edge in you, Viridian jewels can be a natural instinct, lion's eye jewel. Viridian jewels can also be, where is it? The other good one, storm shroud. So if you're doing these maps and you get corrupted Viridian Jewels with some really good modifiers on them, hitting them with a Tainted Mythic Orb. Mm, it was supposed to go unique for the video. No! <laughs> Anyways, hitting them gives you a really good chance at very high target jewels that are worth a lot of currency. So now that we know that we can get jewels that are worth a lot of currency, the Valve Vessels, we can kick up the 16, we can change our maps and add them to a map that we can magic find i encourage you to go out and give this strategy a try i know for me i've made a lot of currency sometimes i hit sometimes i miss and overall i think it's a lot of fun especially at this stage in the league we can just explore different options if you decide to give it a try and you like it please let me know in the comments down below i'd really appreciate and hear your thoughts on it or if you're doing something else that's really cool and you want to talk about it leave a like leave a comment do everything that the youtube algorithm loves you for and we'll move on and try new and exciting things together for now, I'm going to get this video edited and out to you guys, and then over the next couple of days, I'll be working on my cast and crit character. So for now, friends, good luck on your hunting, and if you do some Val Temple, I wish you the best of luck. So long for all of you to say.